Good morning, my name is Neil Whiteman and I'm here today with my colleagues Susie Cocaine and Mick Knowles and we're going to present an introduction to the goals for driver education. So let me introduce Susie Cocaine. Susie is a tri-coaching trainer uh, and she's from Derbyshire and she's completed all the courses with tri-coaching and now offers and presents to others. She's currently walk working towards her audit qualification. Susie. Thank you, Neil. Oh, I forgot I've got to do that. <laughs> Sorry, this is going to take some getting used to. Uh, thank you, Neil. I would like to introduce Mick Knowles, who is an audit registered trainer for tri coaching from Yorkshire. Mick is also an award winning instructor trainer and creator and presenter of the DID Driving Instructors Development podcast on Facebook and co founder of Kit Mag. Mick? Cheers for that, Susie. Um, I'd like to introduce Neil Whiteman. Neil is an audit registered trainer with Tri Coaching from Leicestershire. He's also um, a coach and an award winning trainer. Thank you, guys. So, in 2005, a think tank, the European Road Safety Professionals, worked together to produce the EU Merit Report. The MERIT stands for Minimum European Requirements for Driving Instructor Training and the project was intended as a long-term version. The GDE matrix was designed as a framework of the content for driving instructor training with regard to driving behaviour and road safety. The GDE matrix identifies four levels of driver behaviour. The operational, the tactical, the strategic the lifestyle or personal levels and the knowledge and skills required for each one including the risk, risk factors and the ability to perceive our strengths and weaknesses at each level. We've got, I've got a slide up there from the GDE, it's an original framework of the GDE and you don't need to read it at the present time. We're just showing you what it looks like and then we will pull it apart and explore it in detail. Many people feel overwhelmed when they look at this picture. And today we are going to introduce you to the goals for driver education through a practical demonstration that will last approximately 15 minutes. Then we will be holding a question and answer session if anybody has any questions. Please hold on to them until the end of the presentation as we will address them afterwards. Let's start by introducing you to Susie, a normal housewife with one child, Michael. And Susie has passed her test recently. Let's go back to one of her driving lessons. Oh, I didn't like that. Oh, you'll be fine, just chill. I hate this bit. I'm looking forward to passing my test, but I'm not looking forward to the school run. It's such a nightmare, and I hate being late, and there's a horrible junction on it. You'll be okay, just get on with it. Don't worry about it. Do you really think I'm ready for my test? Well, if I, I wanted to put you on for your test if I didn't think you were ready. That's good to hear, I suppose. Susie has now passed her test and she is normally a very organised and plans her life well and has full control over things. Here's a picture of what we mean. The night before Susie has everything planned and ready for the next day. Michael's schoolwork is complete and school bag is packed. She's planning to go on, a sh on to shopping after the school run. The shopping list is next to her shopping bag and the sandwiches are made for the next day and in the fridge for Susie's lunch. Now Susie can go to bed comfortable and relaxed. The next day has arrived and the alarm clock goes off, but the family wakes up late. Susie is panicking and now in a rush. She was brought up to believe that being late is very rude and unacceptable. 
she's worried people would judge her. Waking Michael up, the feelings running through Susie are stress and annoyance. She's not focused on the job in hand and breakfast is on the go. And Michael and Susie miss it again. In a rush, Susie grabs Michael's school bag and the shopping bags and pushes Michael to the car. As you can see, the tension and stress are running through so Susie and she can't believe it when they come across a queue of traffic and she didn't plan her route before setting off. I don't believe it. I've lost the shopping list now. <sighs> well, I was waiting. Come on, Mum. Get, get going. Look, I can't do that. <laughs> While I was waiting in traffic, Susie starts searching for the shopping list. The atmosphere in the car is now really tense. Come on, Mum, get to school. I'm going to be late again. I'm going to get detention. It's Come not on. my fault. Just go round them. Come I on. Can't. The road now is completely stopped and at a standstill. And the rain, it starts to rain, making it unclear to see what is happening. Susie tries a sat-nav to find a new way to get to school. The sat-nav shows a quicker way, but the junction is five cars away. And now they are waiting to turn, intensifying the situation again. The traffic starts to move after half an hour. Susie moves off and stalls. Mick pipes up in the back. <laughs> You're crap, Mum. You can't even drive. Shut up. <laughs> she starts the car and stalls again. Now there is laughing from the back. <laughs> Susie's extremely stressed, and to top it off, the car starts beeping behind. Finally, Susie moves off one car away from the junction. The fuel light comes on. Susie leans on the steering wheel in tears. Now let's see how that could be different, going back to one of Susie's lessons. I just find it really stressful, actually, that bit. I hate it. Stressful? Mm. Why is it that stressful? <coughs> uh, I just think I'm going to make a mistake, and, and sometimes I stall when I'm rushing, and everybody else knows what they're doing. I just, I just find it really stressful, that bit. Is, is there anything else that you, in, in other life, outside of driving, that you find stressful? Uh, oh, I suppose I'm, I'm quite a stressy person generally, I guess. Um, I've got a kid and I work and oh, actually what really stresses me out is when I'm late. I hate being late for stuff. Okay. So when, when you're stressing or, or you're running late, what do you do to deal with that? So there's coping uh, strategies outside of driving. Oh, when I'm not driving? Oh, uh well, <laughs> I learnt this technique about breathing, so like... Okay. Uh, yeah. Does, does that work? It, it does when I'm not driving. Okay. Mm. Do you think you could try that when you're driving? Oh, I suppose so. I've not really thought about it, actually. What, what effect do you think that might have on your driving? Well, I suppose it makes me feel a bit calmer. Okay, so if you were calmer, do you think it would be better... Your, your driving would be better. 
Well, yeah, because I can drive properly, can't I, when I'm feeling yeah. calm? Yeah, you're very good, yeah. Hmm. Okay. What about, can am I allowed to talk out loud? Yeah, you can do that <laughs> if you want. Do you, do you do that normally? Do you do yeah. yeah, talk to myself or a lot. When, you, when you're cooking and things like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you can do that, that's not a problem at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, should we go and have a drive and have a, have a little practice of that? Yes, yeah, please, yeah, that'll be good. Do you have a, do you have a route in mind where you could go? <sighs> well, can I drive the school run? Yeah, that'd be a good idea, yeah, because that's one of the things that you, you stress at, isn't it? Yeah, well, stress, yeah, to be honest, it makes me want to cry. Yeah, so, okay then. <coughs> so, on a, on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being really relaxed, 10 being really stressed, where would you put yourself on a, you know, on a school run if you were driving on a school run? About an 8. Oh. Is that high? Yeah. And, that, and that's your trying. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, where would you like to be on that? Uh, oh, well, I'd like to be a naught, but I think I'd like to aim for a three at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So, you're in, you're an eight. Yeah. At the moment, but you want to get down to a three. Okay. Um, how much help would you like from me? Well. I just want you to let me have a go and drive it, okay. but just don't let me crash or anything. <laughs> I won't. I won't let you crash. It's not at all. So, if you can focus on driving calmly, remember what you said about breathing and your talking out loud. Okay. Um, then uh, we'll see how we get on. Okay. Yes, please. Just uh, just watch me and, and help me if yeah, I'm going to yeah. make a mistake I, or I'll something. Keep the car safe. Don't worry about that. <coughs> okay. Okay. Susie drives on, practicing her breathing and talking out loud, and Mick keeping the car safe. Ooh, okay, I don't like this bit, but it's okay. How, how are you going to deal with the cyclists ahead of you now? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, got that. I'm not okay, I'm alright. Well, then that's right. good. Okay, busy traffic. I'm fine. I can do this. Yeah. Where, where about you now on that scale? Five. Wow, so you've come down from an eight to a five. I think I have, yeah. Okay, so the breathing's really helping you. Mm-hmm. Good. Oh, okay. Oh, God. This is that junction. Hang on. Right. Oh, okay. To first gear. Set my gas. Fighting point. Keep your feet still, Susie. Okay, that wasn't that bad. Well done, that was great. Can you just pull up over my left hand side, please? Okay. <sighs> well done, so you've just driven that independently now on your own. That's a couple of things, but mainly on your own. Huh? How do you feel now, and where about would you say you are on that scale of 0 to 10 now? I think I'm a 3. Wow. <laughs> so you've gone from an 8 to a 3 just from talking and breathing. Yeah. Brilliant. So, do you think you could bring this into your driving every every lesson then? Yeah, I think I could actually. And in the future, once you've passed and you're out there on the roads? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So, what do you think you need to remember about this then? Okay, so I've just got to remember when I'm on my own that I've got to just breathe, stay calm, talk myself through out loud maybe. Brilliant. Excellent. Well done. Okay. Susie has now passed the test. Let's go back to the GDE to see how things could be different. Level four, the person. The next day has arrived. The alarm clock does not go off again, but the family wake up late. Susie stays calm, realising what they're going to be late. She rings the school to explain the situation that has brought the family time and allows Susie's feelings to remain in the present and focus on the difficulties that might be thrown in front of them. Michael, wake up. We're late. I'm just going to call school. Oh, not again. I want my breakfast, Mum. Come on. It's all right. It'll be fine. We'll grab a bar on the way. Oh, not again. <laughs> Level three, the journey. 
with the family in this more relaxed state, they can enjoy the journey. Susie is listening to the radio and hears there's an accident ahead. Because she's in this level-headed state, Susie is able to rejig the route and because of her call made earlier, everyone remains calm and happy. Level two, the road. Susie has dealt with the road and adjusting the route is now able to cope with the rain and anticipate hazards in a calm and healthy way, using the strengths of a journey and managing it safe. Level one, the control. The control of the vehicle is smooth. Susie notices the fuel light is on and can now plan to re refuel after dropping Michael off at school and she can focus on eco dri driving to save fuel and she has no eye emotions and the conversation is light hearted. See, we started out late by, but by me phoning and rejigging the route I've actually saved us 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching our presentation. We'll now open up the room for any questions that you may have. I'd like to say we're not classically trained. Anybody got any questions? Does everybody understand the GDE? <laughs> yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even have the baseball cap. <laughs> they made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> any questions on what you've just seen out there? Does everybody understand the GDE? Has everybody seen the GDE? Is this a new thing to, to anybody? Has anybody come across it before? Is it kind of a... Most people have sort of heard of it and know that we're supposed to be worrying, you know, into our driving lessons in some way, don't they? Um, but a lot of the times it looks so complicated. But actually, so what we've tried to do is just make it basic and relevant to real life. Um, so we're just going to put some notes on as we go along uh, about the different levels, really. Um, and usually what we find is driving instructors tend to focus on levels one and two. So that's sort of the car control, teaching people how to drive the cars, basically. Um, and then the road... Am I running away with no, this? Fine. Is that OK? Um, and then the road dealing with road traffic situations. But we don't often go into the next levels three and four where we're looking at the context of the journey and taking responsibility and planning the journey. Um, and level four, who are we? Who are we as people? What triggers us? What are our triggers? And actually, the being late as a mum one is a personal one to me. So I have to be a bit aware of that <laughs> and manage that. <laughs> Go for your start. <laughs> so let's take us back now to the very first driving lesson when I was in the car with Susie. Um, what sort of what sort of help was I giving Susie? No. It wasn't. All it was was, if I what what was I saying? Yeah, yeah. When she asked about um, uh, was she ready for a test? What what did I come out with then? Sorry, say again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there was no real um, help there for Susie, was there at all? It was just, yeah, you, you'll be okay, get on with it, type thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I just 
I was on my own agenda. I wasn't listening or paying much attention to, to Susie. I was just doing what I wanted to do, basically. Good. So um, we then had the been late in the car. So late to school. What did you pick up from that? Okay. So that's not true to form. <laughs> Susie getting frustrated um, on on her way to school because she's late, there's queuing traffic, etc. You know, this is a, a, an everyday occurrence, isn't it, that we as as drivers come across daily. Okay. So I thought you were gonna say something. No. Go, sorry, can you speak up? Yep, yep. So because I was in the back telling her to get round and all the rest of the stuff, putting under more pressure as well, you know, telling her to go around queuing traffic and stuff like that, I'm so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else that anybody picked up from that little bit there that would fit into one of the levels of the GDE? Sometimes you've left home and it's fine, and then you drive down the road, so he reverses off the driveway in front of you, and you go, <laughs> No, it's fine, you carry on. So you carry on with your journey, and then a bit further, somebody else comes around the corner really quickly and nearly clips you, and you go, No problem, no problem, carry on. And it's starting to drip a little bit, and actually, where you started out okay, then some comes around the corner and cuts you up. And you can end up in quite a foul mood about it. And then you start to swear a little bit under your breath. And then actually, your driving can change just purely because of the mood that you're now in. So if you compare that to being in a really good mood, it's a nice sunny day, you've got your tunes on, you get to a junction, it's really busy. No, please, after you. And then you're happy to wait for your gap. You might actually take a safer gap and make a safer decision than when you were actually in that kind of a mood. So that's really what we're talking about, is that knowing ourselves and how our behaviour can be affected in the car and how our driving can be different. And through that self-awareness, we can actually start to make those decisions like Sue, the second Susie did, when she was, okay, I know I'm going to be late, but if I just plan ahead a little bit, it doesn't need to be a complete disaster. And actually, it worked out really well when she did that. So if, if you think about the first demonstration we did where they were in a rush, we probably only focused mainly on the two bottom levels, the driving in traffic and the vehicle control. We didn't really look at the, the other two at the top. And most people only focus on one and two, level one and two don't really push it up to level three and four. In the second demonstration, it was a combination of all the four levels coming together there. So they, were, they had the knowledge and the skill. They are identifying the risks and the aspects of the risks and self-assessing it as they were going along. Yeah. So looking at the two different, as the two different styles of myself instructing there, what was the main differences that you picked up the second time? Listening to the students and helping them find compromises. Yeah, I was purely on Susie's agenda. I wasn't on my agenda. It was purely Susie. I was listening to what she was saying, um, and then the question came from Susie's answer. Yeah. Anything else? Sorry, say again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So active listening, being on their agenda, listening to what they're saying, following up, coming out with the coping, or asking about the coping strategies, her coping strategies, and then she's brought them in from outside from, I think she said, cooking or something like that, and everyday life, into using them same coping strategies in the car. Anything else? Yeah, yeah, and just by 
just by getting Susie to use them coping strategies then, changed her, her body language and her mannerism and she became more relaxed, like, like you said, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. So by her taking control of that then, um, she's then using them, uh, learning them skills and developing them skills for later on when she's out on the road on her own post-test. And it's not all about the test. Anything else? Yeah, yeah, there's a, a few uh, well dones, and uh, whereas before it was, ah, I'd be all right, just get on with it, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, good. Do you remember when we were stressed out at scale as well? She said she was just telling her that you were like talking to her pretty close up to her. Did that uh, give you another motivation to work it out what you were doing? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, superb. Yeah. And then what, what did I do with that then? Like, what we did the after stuff you did as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we also set set a, a, a scale of where she wanted to be yeah. by the end of it, by the end of that little drive that we did. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I like the fact that you used, you asked me about my techniques that I use, mm. because I suffer with stress in life, Susie suffers from stress in life generally. So, you know, I'm a grown up, I've got kids, I've lived a bit of life, I've developed my own strategies over the years. If you'd have picked up on, say you took my breathing strategies and my talking out loud, and then you tried to pass that on to the next customer, that might not work for them. But actually what you did was you asked me how I cope with stress in everyday life, and I told you my coping strategies that are personal to me. Yeah. And then you worked on that, you built that as a strength, and you raised my awareness about that. Mm. I didn't even realise that my shoulders were up by my ears and I was like, Ugh, in certain situations. And I'd have carried that through after I passed my test if you hadn't addressed it for me. So actually raising my awareness with that, encouraging me to come up with my own coping strategies is something then that's going to last me and take me through. Yeah. So like, like Susie said then though, you might get somebody that hasn't got any coping strategies. Does, you know, it, it happens. But then you can offer these coping strategies to them. Don't force them on them, offer them. And they might then just take them and use them for themselves. They might not work, or they might. Anything else? Hey, it's, yeah, it's just building on that. It's their thoughts and feelings. So how they're gonna behave will come from them. And the best person to know what's best for the person is that person themselves. As you all know from, you know, when you're doing training yourself, or role play at any point, you know how difficult that is to focus and think about your thoughts and your feelings at the same time. Just with the bits that I'm writing on the boards, it's just before we sort of close up, has anybody got anything burning that I've missed that I could add on to these in terms of learning to do tests, the car control, road busy junctions, context of your journey? or your beliefs. Anybody just want to add anything before we close up? We good, have I missed anything, lads? No, no you've done well. With it all. So, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming and listening. Hopefully you've got something from this. If you want to come and speak to us, we will be in here, packing up for a little bit, but then you'll be able to find us in the, uh, in the main hall where the, um, all the stands are. I'll be, on the kit mag stall, um, Susie and Mia won't be too far away either. Okay, so come and see us, have a chat with us if you if you've got any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Total Drive is an award-winning driving instructor app for independents, multi-schools, pupils, and parents. The app includes a powerful diary, free lesson reminders, progress records, reflective logs and more. Total Drive is proven to help instructors earn more, work smarter and improve pupil pass rates. If you're a driving instructor, you need to try Total Drive by starting your completely free 30-day trial at www.totaldrive.co.uk.